This evening, praise God, hallelujah. I got a good word for you. Yeah. Amen, praise God. Just to read a few announcements, 
uh, before we get into the Word of God. Just as a reminder, we want to remind you guys uh, of our next in-person church service. Our next in-person church service will be Sunday, August the 7th. Again, our next church in-person church service will be August the 7th at 11 o'clock a.m. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you don't want to forget about that. And then, of course, you know, starting or effective in September, uh, the first Sunday in September, uh, we're going to go and return back to service every Sunday. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Yeah. Long time coming. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So you don't want to forget about that. Effective in September, the first Sunday in September. We're going to return back to heaven service every Sunday in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Also, we have upcoming a volunteer open enrollment. We have volunteer open enrollment. Uh, and also on that same day, uh, we have a workshop and the workshop is for those who are already, uh, who are already volunteers or part of the Ministry of Helps. And also we're opening up for open enrollment for them as well. They need to come and be a part of this workshop as well. All of you that's interested in, in, in supporting and being volunteers at the church. And that workshop will be on Saturday, August the 13th. Again, that workshop will be on Saturday, August the 13th from 9 o'clock a.m. until 12. And it's an ongoing training. Amen. How many know it's important that we continue to get trained at least twice a year? Amen. Very important uh, so that our church can continue to grow and develop. Amen. A lot of times people just lack training. Some people just don't know. And that's the reason why we have at least one or possibly two Ministry of Health uh, seminars or workshops every year, amen, so that we could continue to grow in the name of Jesus. Again, that's Saturday, August 13th, Saturday, August the 13th, started at 9 o'clock a.m., and that's for all your new volunteers and those who are already volunteers, amen, praise God. I call them continuing education classes, very important, amen, in every profession, Everybody has continuing ed classes, amen, so that you can continue to grow and develop and be the best that you can be, amen, praise God. So don't forget also on Sundays, we're going to be continuing on We Are the Church. I don't know about you, but I have been enjoying myself, amen. We call it Church 101, Church 101, We Are the Church, so you don't want to forget about that, amen, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. This evening, we're going to continue on the subject of I thirst. I thirst, and really that deals with having a spiritual hunger for the things of God. Yeah. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to get right into the Word of God. Heavenly Father, once again, we do come in the honor and privilege, Father, today to get into your Word. Father, we thank you that your Word will come alive to us. Father, that I'll not miss it to the left nor to the right, but I'll follow your perfect will concerning this subject of I thirst, having a spiritual hunger for you, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. And Father, I just thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the hearts of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we covenant with you in advance to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word or through gifts of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer shout it. Amen. amen, amen, praise God. Turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 6. We're going to take a look at our text scriptures, and we are still on the subject of I thirst. Amen, praise God. John's Gospel, chapter 6. And we're talking about I thirst. We're talking about a spiritual hunger. How to develop a spiritual hunger. It's very important that we have this spiritual hunger to be in the presence of God. Amen. To worship God. To come to the house of God. That spiritual hunger is so very important. You remember last week we talked about, you know, since the pandemic, you know, I, I believe the body of Christ have somewhat lost its hunger for the things of God. And, you know, we was out of church for nearly, what, two years? 
And uh, for some people, they, they drew closer to God. But then for a lot of people, they went further away from God. And yeah. they kind of, you know, lost their craving and hunger and thirst for the things of God. And, and so that's why I believe the Spirit of God is having me to minister along these lines. Uh, that we need to renew our hunger, renew our thirst. Amen. In fact, let's just face it. We need a revival. America needs a revival. The church, even more than America, the church needs a revival. A revival for what? A hunger for the things of God. Amen. Praise God. Now, John's Gospel, chapter 6, and we begin reading there, verse 9. There's a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, well, make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples. He gave it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes. Now notice here, I told you to underline something right about here. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. Or oh, as much as they can eat, or as much as they could handle. And of course, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather all the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. So as we see at the story, the 5,000 men were fed, plus the women and the children, etc. But notice there, it said, as much as they would eat. We're talking about I thirst or having a spiritual hunger for the things of God. You know, that, that's one thing about the Lord. In other words, as long as we're hungry, and that's what he meant by that, as much as they would. As long as they're hungry, keep feeding them. I like that. As long as they were hungry, they kept feeding them. Amen. Well, I believe the same thing is true for us today. As long as we are hungry, God's going to keep feeding us. Amen. Amen. God will keep feeding us. Turn with me to Isaiah 44, another one of our text scriptures. Isaiah 44. As long as we stay hungry and thirsty, God will feed us. In fact, he'll feed us and we won't no more. As the old saying, he'll feed you till you won't no more. Uh, why? Because God wants to fill us up. He's the God of overflow. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But he's the God of overflow. Note there it said, as long as much as they would eat, in other words, he will continue to feed them as long as they were hungry. And that is so true for us today as the body of Christ. As long as we stay hungry and thirsty, yeah. God will quench our thirst. Huh? He'll fill our bellies. Amen. Out our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Isaiah 44 and verse 3, note here, for I will pour water, watch this, part A of verse 3. He said, I will pour water upon him that is what? Thirsty. I'll continue to pour water on those who are what? Thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Just as long as we thirsty, he'll keep it coming. He'll keep it coming. Keep it coming. Yeah. The water will keep flowing. Come on. The water will keep coming. The food will keep coming. The blessings will keep coming. Mm -hmm. Healing will keep coming. But we must be what? Thirsty. Yeah. We got to be hungry. As one preacher said, hungry. Yeah. Hey Amen. I got a question for you. Are you hungry for the things of God? Yeah. Are you still thirsting after righteousness? Yeah. Are you still thirsting after the things of God? Now don't forget, water is a type of the Holy Spirit. He'll continue to fill us as long as we are thirsty. He'll continue to fill us as long as we are hungry. Yeah. You notice there in John's Gospel, chapter 7 and verse 38, it said, Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Yeah. Those who are thirsty, he said, I'll continue to pour water. How about Matthew chapter 5, another one of our text scriptures? Matthew chapter 5. He continued to feed us. Amen. Let me tell you, God, he's the God of overflow. Yeah. He's the God of more than enough. Amen. You could never exhaust 
the things of God. Never. No. Oh, no. God always have more for you. As long as you're hungry. As long as you're thirsty. God will keep it coming. He'll keep it coming. He'll keep it coming. I like that. Say that. Keep it coming. Say it again. Keep it coming. God will keep that water flowing. Water is a type of the Holy Spirit. I mean, he'll keep the blessings coming. Whatever you need. I mean, God has an inexhaustible supply of good things for us. An inexhaustible supply of good things for us. Heaven will never run out. Let me say that again. Heaven will never run out of the Holy Ghost, yeah. of prosperity, of blessings, and peace, and love, and joy. <clears throat> heaven will never run out. I said heaven will never run out. Inexhaustible. You can't exhaust heaven. Come on now. Praise God. Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Verse 6. Jesus said, Blessed are they which do what? Hunger and thirst. Underline that. Blessed or fortunate are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Yeah. I mean, filled to the brim and overflow. You shall be filled. God will continue to feed you as long as you are hungry. Don't ever forget that. He'll continue to fill you up as long as you are hungry, as long as you are thirsty. Then we broke down that word hunger uh, to give it more clarification. Hunger in the Greek means to have a strong desire to fill a need. Have a strong desire to fill a need, yeah. to crave for. Oh, I like that word. To desire earnestly, to seek and to chase after. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Wow. Being hungry for the things God. We ought to become God chasers. Yeah. Find a neighbor right now and ask them, are you a God chaser? Are you a God chaser? Yeah, that's what hungry means. It, it means that we ought to be chasing after him. You know, we sing that old song, Chasing After Him. Now you got to chase after the things of God. Yeah. You got to have a craving for the things of God. You got to be desperate for the things of God. Are you desperate for the things of God? Oh, yes, Lord. Say la. Think yeah. about that. Say la. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Are you hungry for the things of God? Are you desperate for the things of God? And then that word thirst there, the Greek word means to eagerly long for. Uh, eagerly long for, yeah. to painfully, I like that word there, to painfully crave after those things that will quench your thirst. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, you, you, you painfully searching after God to be in his presence. The Bible said, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And you can add whatever else you want to put in there, fullness of peace, fullness of prosperity, fullness of healing. Come on, fullness of tranquility of mind, yeah. fullness of safety, fullness of preservation. Come on now. Yeah. Where can it be found? In the presence of God. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yes. 2 Kings chapter 4. That's the type of God that we serve. The things in heaven are inexhaustible. You can never exhaust the storehouses of heaven. I like that. You need to jot that down. You can never exhaust the storehouses of heaven. The storehouse of healing. The storehouse of the Holy Spirit. The storehouse of love and joy and peace. Come on now. You can never exhaust the storehouses of heaven. There's more than you can ever imagine or think. Amen. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 4. And let's pick up there at verse 1. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear or reverence the Lord. And the creditor, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen or slaves. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What do you want, woman? What hast thou in your house? What do you got in your house? And she said, Well, thy handmaid hath 
Not anything in the house except the pot of oil. Verse 3. Then he said, well, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Now notice what he told them to do. Prophet told them, go borrow these vessels, many as you can, of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Come on now. Borrow not a few. Now, look up that phrase there, borrow not a few. Borrow not a few mean don't limit yourself. Yeah. I like that. Remember, we, we serve the God that's more than enough. He's El Shaddai, yeah. the God that is more than enough. Yeah. Remember, he fed the 5,000. As much as they were hungry, he kept it coming. As much as they were hungry, he kept it coming. Well, this woman here, you know, see what the prophet is telling He said, look, borrow not a few, which means don't limit yourself. In other words, what are you trying to say, Pastor? You determine how much oil that you're going to get. <laughs> Let's continue to read the story. Amen. But he said, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy sons, and shalt pour out in all these vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her son who brought the vessel to her and she poured out. And it came to pass the vessel were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet another vessel. Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. <laughs> then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live now and the children and the rest. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, borrow not a few. Well, I got a word for you once again. That means quit limiting yourself. As long as you're hungry, God will feel you. Man, you do whatever it takes, glory to God, to get into the presence of God. You do what it takes. As long as you're hungry for the things of God, he'll keep filling you. He'll keep filling you. Come on now. We determine how much we will receive from the Lord. But you know, we got to get desperate. There comes a time we just got to get desperate for the things of God. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. She got desperate to be in the presence of God. She said, but if I may just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. Glory to God. But she had to get desperate because she had no business, praise God. She had no business being in a public place. She, she had no business being there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. No business. She could have got stoned to death. But she was desperate for the things of God. And as a result, she got her healing. <laughs> Glory to God. I ain't got time to read the story to you. But you know the story about the one with the issue of blood? You got desperate for the things of God. And that's what we got to do. We got to get desperate to be in the presence of God. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because see, as long as we're hungry and as long as we're thirsty, God will fill us. Yeah. God will fill us. We should be desperate for the things of God. And as you are desperate, let me tell you, he'll fill you up with more anointing. He'll fill you up with peace and prosperity and healing and joy and blessing. Why? He's the God of the overflow. Turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 7. John's Gospel, chapter 7. Don't be afraid. Man, jump on out there. Be like your woman. Keep borrowing more vessels. Look, find another one. Bring another one. Keep bringing. Keep getting desperate. Keep being thirsty. And he'll keep filling you up. Why? Because the things in heaven are inexhaustible. Yeah. He has an inexhaustible Woo! supply of the anointing. An inexhaustible supply of the glory of God. An inexhaustible supply of the peace of God. Of the prosperity of God. Of healing and joy. I mean, what you need, God has it. But you got to stay full. You got to stay on full. You got to stay on fire for God. Glory to God. You got to be desperate for the things of God. We're talking about I thirst. I've got a spiritual hunger to be in his presence. Just to be in this vicinity. Just to be around the anointing. I can remember growing up in a Pentecostal church. Let me tell you, we just wanted to be around the anointing. Hey, man, we might not have been able to get in the mix of everybody else, but we just wanted to be around the anointing. I used to always like to sit right up front. 
It just seemed like the glory was up front. You sit in the back, you got people back there laughing and giggling and carrying on, telling jokes, playing around. Oh, I want to be right there near the instrument. Oh, when we get the shout and the glory of God to come into the house, just seemed like there was more glory up front. I don't know, I might have been wrong, I might have been right. But to me, it seemed like the glory was up front. I don't want to be disturbed by nobody. I wasn't number 12, 13, 14 years old. I wanted to be closer to the glory. Desperate for the things of God. On fire for the things of God. Yeah. Thirsty for the things of God. Yeah. John's Gospel chapter 7. Verse 37. In that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me. <laughs> oh, woo, man, stop right there. <laughs> In other words, Jesus is looking for thirsty people. <laughs> He's looking for thirsty men. He's looking for thirsty women. Are you thirsty for the things of God? Are you hungry? The Bible said that his eyes roam to and fro throughout the entire earth looking for someone who's thirsty for him, looking for someone who's hungry for him. My God, are you hungry for the things of God? Are you thirsty for the things of God? Well, let's read on. I got a little bit excited here. Pardon my enthusiasm. Amen. Verse 36, you shall seek me. If you shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am, thine, you cannot come. But verse 37 says what? If any man, Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, <laughs> glory to God, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. God always pour out more than enough. He can't help himself, glory to God. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He can't help himself. That's Daniel in the lion's den. He can't help himself. He's a God that is more than enough. That's Moses. Come on. He can't help himself. As long as you thirsty, I thirst for the things of God. You should thirst for the things of God. Yes. God will always pour out more than enough. He's the God of how much more. <laughs> and what we receive. Now I need you to jot this down. I've been saying it, but I need you to get this in your spirit. What we receive is dependent, is dependent on our hunger and thirst for God. What we receive, what we receive, whether it's healing, blessings, whatever it might be, what we receive is dependent on our hunger and thirst for the things of God. Remember how we talked about a thirsty person, how you could compare him to a drunk man? You know, a drunk is in need of booze to quench or satisfy their thirst, right? Have you ever noticed a drunk man? Remember we talked about that? Or, or a drug addict or a power-seeking person or a money-craving person? Uh, you know, they'll do whatever it takes to get what they need. Why? Because they're hungry. I said those drug addicts, those power-seeking people, people that, you know, that uh, uh, suffer from gluttony, it don't make a difference. What? type of strong desire it is, they'll do whatever it takes to get that need back. Well, we ought to feel the same way about when we come into the presence of God. We ought to say, Lord, whatever it take, <laughs> whatever it take, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do it. But have you ever noticed those type of people? They get a little giddy. They get uncomfortable. They get a little shaky. I've been around folk like this before. They get a little flighty, silly, unstable, off-balance, lightheaded unsteady, but I'm going to be honest with y'all, since we've been out of church all that time, I tell you, my wife and I, boy, we've been craving to get back in church, we didn't got a little giddy and, you know, a little silly and this and that, man, why? I just miss being in the house of God, there's nothing like being in his presence, they praise God for Facebook Live and television and all that, but nothing can replace being in the house of God is something about being in the house of God that we come together and we will experience that corporate anointing. Yeah. Come on now, when the body of Christ is there, the corporate anointing kicks in and takes it to a whole nother level. That's why I love church. 
My God, it's just something about all of us coming together and, 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 and breaking bread together and communing together that that corporate anointing, that corporate anointing is bigger than the individual anointing. And that's why we cannot forsake the house and gathering together. We need that corporate anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talked about how people try to satisfy that inward thirst with external materialism and the carnal things of this world. You can never be truly happy or satisfied without God. God desires to pour out his manifested presence, his power, his blessing upon every believer. He desires to do that. Last week we talked about I thirst. I thirst for God's presence. Remember we went in the scripture and we talked about David. How David had his heart. That he, he, was, he set his heart and affection on God. David became a man after God's very own heart. Yeah. You know we went to Acts 13 verse 22 where it said that David became a man after God's very own heart. Then we went to Psalms 42. As a deer passed through the water, so does my soul long after thee. Here we see David having a heart. Now, number one, I thirst. Thirst for God's presence. Thirst for his presence. That's what we ought to be thirsty for first. Is his presence. Yeah. Like David said, as a deer pants for the water, so does my soul long after thee. David set his affections on God. He set his heart on God. My goodness, hallelujah. Now today, let's pick up from that point. We ought to be thirsty for the house of God. So number one, thirsty for the presence of God. Number two, thirsty uh, for the house of God. We should have a hunger. We should have a thirst. We should be desperate to get to the house of God. Turn with me to 1 Chronicles 29. 1 Chronicles 29. People got a hunger and thirst for all kinds of stuff. Smoke reefer, drink, women, power, food, but they ain't got that strong desire to come into the house of God. We ought to have that strong desire. When we was out of church for two years, I couldn't take it. I got giddy and itchy and, oh man, just didn't feel completely right. Just something about coming into the house of God. Yeah. First Chronicles 29, verse 1 through 3. Furthermore, David, watch this, watch this now. Furthermore, David, the king, said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace, watch this, or the house of God. The palace was the house of God, or the temple of God. Okay. For the house of God is not for man, but is for the Lord. Oh. Building of the temple was for the Lord. Watch verse 2. Notice what David said. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. The gold for the things to be made of gold. The silver for the things of silver. And you know what that? He pretty much said. Ain't nothing good enough for the house of God. Uh, it don't make a difference what's necessary, whether it's gold, whether it's silver. That means your best offer. That means your best time. Yeah. Your best gift, glory to God. Whatever it takes, David said, look, my heart has been set toward the house of God. For the things to be made of silver and brass, etc. Drop down verse 3. I love it. I love verse 3. He said, moreover, because I have done what? Set my affection to what? The house of my God. Woo I like that there. You set your affection. That's your desire. Yeah. That's your craving. That's your thirst. Oh, you desperate for the things of God. I like that David set his heart and affection toward God. Yeah. Turn me to Psalms 27. Y'all getting something out of this? Psalms 27. We need to get back to the things of God. We need to get back to the house of God. Get back into his presence. We talked about that. Now let's get back into the house of God. Psalms 27 verse 4. I like what the psalmist David says again. That David was something else. Oh, let me tell you. David went through some tough times, but let me tell you. 
It's not always how you get started. It's how you finish the thing. David finished strong. Come on now. He became a man after God's very own heart. Verse 4. One thing. David said one thing. In other words, this is what's most important. This is, y'all hear me? Yeah. David said, this is the most important thing in my life. Not gold, not silver, mm -hmm. not women, not all these things in this world. No, he said, one thing have I desired. Yeah. And we already talked about that you will follow whatever you strongly desire. Mm -hmm. Don't ever forget that. Whatever you strongly desire, yeah. whatever is a part of your meditation, whatever is a part of your thought is what you're going to chase after. Well, David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. Note that, seek. That will I crave and hunger and thirst after. That I may do what? Dwell. Mm. Dwell mean what? Live in. Come on. Yeah. Take up residence. Live where? In the house of the Lord. Yeah. All the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And he'll set me up upon a rock. Yeah. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies yeah. round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle, sacrifices of joy. And I will sing, and I'll sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou says, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> David set his heart toward the house of God. Where have you set your heart? Turn with me to Psalms 122. My God, I feel a little preach coming on. Yes, <laughs> Woo! Oh, Jesus. Whatever's on the inside will come out of you, I tell you. Yes, Psalms 122. And uh, huh, tell you, God is good. Verse, verse 1. Psalms 122, verse 1. David said, uh, I was glad. When they said unto me, <laughs> not I was sad, not I was mad, not is it Sunday again? Oh Lord, is it time to go to church again? No, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. <laughs> oh my, I can preach that about right there. I was glad. We ought to be excited about coming into the house of God. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory I said God. Glory, to God. glory to God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Turn me to Haggai. Yeah, Haggai, chapter 1. And this is what has happened since the pandemic. Two years since we pretty much been in church, and some folks still ain't returned. Mm. I believe people have lost Christians, have lost their desire and hunger and thirst for the house of God. Yeah. They'd rather just be at home. I understand if you're sick, mm -hmm. you got COVID or something else wrong with you, you know we're not mad at you because of that. No, 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 we're not talking about you. But if you can come into the house of God, you should make your way. Yeah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me. I just think David had a little unction behind that. He, he probably said, I'm glad it's time to go into the presence of God. Yeah. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, there's fullness of peace. Yeah. In his presence, yeah. there's fullness of healing. Yeah. My God, what you need, God's got it. He's got everything you need, yeah. but you got to get into his presence. Hmm. Notice here what happened to the church in Haggai chapter 1 verse 2 ah. thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying this people this is what the people are saying and this is what they were saying then and that's what they said today the people are saying this ain't time to go back to church the time that the Lord's house should be built well, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet 
You know, you got the major and minor prophets. It's time for you, O oh ye, to dwell in your sealed houses. Y'all sitting up in your house. That's what that God said. You, you've been sitting up in your houses and you've allowed the house of God to lie waste. Verse 5, he said, now therefore consider your ways. And that's the reason why Haggai said, you've so much been working hard like a dog, and yet you bring in a little. You eat, but you still ain't got enough. You drink, and you're not feeling. You're still thirsty. You call, but you still ain't warm. Yeah. You earn wages, but it's like you got a hole in the bag. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Now, if you do research, they stayed away from the house of God for over 10 years. Over 10 years, they stayed away from the house of God. They kept on saying, oh, this ain't time to go to the house of God. This ain't time to build up the temple. No, this ain't time. No, we ain't ready for that yet. No, it's too much going on. No, no. And God had to speak through the prophet. And that's what's going to happen in these last days. Folks, you ain't seen nothing yet. God's going to raise up some people that's going to speak to the nations. Glory to God. Yes, and, and it's sad that you got to get to the prophet. You ought to just listen to your pastor. You ain't got to hear the booming message from the prophet. Yeah. But we kind of lacking them prophets in these last days that don't mind dropping it. Yeah. Dropping the bomb. And that day going to come. Yeah. And God's been allowing us time to repent. Uh -huh. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's time to repent, glory to God. Why? The kingdom of God is in here. Why? Jesus is on his way back. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. It's high time to praise the Lord. It's high time to get back into the house of God. Yes. But in Haggai, they stayed away from the church for many, many years. Many years. And that's what the people were saying. Who cares what the people say? Let the people be a lie and let God be the truth. Let God be the truth. Got to quit following people and follow God. Woo -wee. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, my goodness. Oh, we serve a good God, don't we? Yeah. I said we serve a good God. Yes, yeah, we do. Now let's talk about thirsty. I thirst. We are the thirst for worship. We are the thirst for worship. You look up that word worship in the Greek, it means to kiss the hand of. Come on now. It means to, to, to kneel or lay prostrate, mm -hmm. face down before someone as an act of reverence. Mm -hmm. It also means to show a lot of love for someone. So yeah. let me back up again. The Hebrew word there is actually proskuneo. Proskuneo. It means to kiss the hand of or kneel, lay prostrate, face down before someone or God. We're, we're making reference to God as an act of reverence. It also means to show a lot of love for someone. Yeah. So when it says we come to worship the Lord, well, that's the idea. Come on. It's to kiss the Lord. It's to lay prostrate before the Lord. It's to kneel before the Lord. Turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. Ah! Woo! <laughs> My goodness. Ah, 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 ah. Hallelujah. Luke 7, verse 37. That's right, it's high time. We should hunger and thirst after the things of God. We should be desperate uh, for the things of God. Mm -hmm. uh, desperate for the presence of God. Yes. Uh, we ought to be desperate, amen, to, to worship God. And we ought to be desperate uh, to be in his presence. We ought to be thirsty to be in the house of God. And now we need to be thirsty to worship God. This one thing when we start out, now listen, learn something. A lot of times when we start our praise and worship, mm -hmm. or whatever you may want to call it, your worship service, we may start out clapping. Well, we're praising God. Praise His name. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. We start out a little fast. Yeah. Then we go from praising God yeah. and talking about His goodness, praising God and clapping, mm -hmm. to when we begin to worship God. 
The kneeling of means to lie prostrate before the Lord. It means to honor and reverence the Lord. Well, note there in Luke 7, verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. Watch this. She was a what? A sinner. I wonder, what does it mean, the words of the Lord? When she knew that Jesus sat at meat at the Pharisees' house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet. We can learn from this sinner. Come on now. Stood at his feet uh, uh, behind him weeping. Yeah. Weeping and began to what? Wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head yeah. and then kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now in the Pharisees, the religious order, or we can say the church of today, folk who call itself religious, the religious folk got mad. Now when the Pharisees which had been him saw it, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he was a real prophet, ain't that so? If he was a real prophet, he would have known who and what man or woman that touched him, for she's a sinner. Yeah. You mean to tell me we go learn from a sinner? Let's read. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, and one owed him 500 pence, the other 50. And when he had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave the most. And he said to him, Thou hast rightly said. Now watch verse 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, you see this woman? Ever since I've entered into this house, come on, since I stepped foot up in this house, yes. she has gave me, thou, y'all ain't gave me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears. She created water and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Y'all didn't give me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. Yes. Remember what we talked about worship? It means to kiss the hand of, right? Mm -hmm. And my head, verse 46, with all thou didst not anoint. Y'all didn't even anoint my head. But this woman mm -hmm. hath anointed my feet with oil. Mm. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Yes. Woo, this woman taught us how to worship God, how to reverence God. Yes. We ought to be thirsty to worship God. Come on, on fire to worship God. We ought to be hungry and desperate to worship God. Mm. Yes. How about 2 Samuel chapter 6? Let's take a look at David again. <laughs> Talking about worshiping God, that David was something else. David was something else. Notice that. Verse 14, 2 Samuel 6, 14. And David danced before the Lord with what? All his might. Underline that. He danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord, which shouted and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michelle's daughters, uh, uh, Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping. Come on now, let's, David didn't care. I'm going to shout and I'm going to sing like ain't nobody watching. Yeah. I mean, y'all remember that song? Yeah. Dance like ain't nobody watching. Yeah. Sing like ain't nobody listening. Watch this. David leaping and dancing before the Lord as she despised him in her heart. I wonder why. And they brought in the ark of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, some folk will get mad at you because you know how to worship God. But if you feel like doing a lap, come on now, because you want to do a lap around the church, folk looking at you. Look how stupid he looks. Look at her. Look. Don't worry about how people think about you. You go ahead and worship God. Man, we came to worship God. We came to praise God. We came to get in his presence. Quit worrying about what people think. Just like her. She was upset with that. Who he think he is doing all this? And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. Good God. 
in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. David offered a burnt offering, verse 18. And as soon as David had made an end of the offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Come on. Drop down in verse 20. Then David returned to bless the household. And uh -huh. Michelle, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. Watch this. Who uncovered himself. We're not telling nobody to get naked at church now. Come on now. He got down to his drawers. Don't do that. Because we're going to have to put something on you. We might have to cut you out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the king of Israel, who uncovered David. I mean, David gave it all, man. He uncovered himself, got down to nothing but draws. In the eyes of the handmaid and the servants, and one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said to Michelle, It was before the Lord who chose me before thy father and before the house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play before the Lord. Now watch verse 22, and we'll stop here. I will yet, watch David. He said, Michelle, look here, girl. You ain't seen nothing. I will yet be more vile than this. <laughs> In other words, you ain't seen nothing yet. I will get even more vile. One translation said, I will become even more undignified. Another translation said, I will become even more foolish. And my final translation said, I will dance even more recklessly than this. Oh, we're talking about worshiping the Lord. <laughs> Lord, I need you every hour. We used to sing that song back in the day. We didn't all totally understand the song. But man, let me tell you, I need thee every hour. I need thee. And that's what it means to be hungry and thirsting after the things of God. Lord, I need you every moment, every hour, every second. Lord, I need you. Yes, Lord. Oh, we should sing that song. I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to. singing that song. Woo, my, my, my. Bless my, me my. now, my Savior. I come to We'll have a hymn over here. We have a song over there. Yes. Man, let's get back to the New Testament. Yes, the book of Acts, church, yes. glory to God. Yes. Well, you got a song, you got a hymn, got a prophecy. Yes. It's time to get back to the yes. things of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I thirst for thee, Lord. Yes. I need yes. thee in my life, Lord. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes. Feel like heaven church. Oh, My goodness. Woo I'm not going to let the rocks beat me, praising the Lord. I'm not going to let the rocks beat me, worshiping God. Yes. And if you don't cry out, the Bible said the rocks should cry out. Yes. My Ooh. God. Somebody said it don't take all that. You're right. It takes that answer. Because my, my God has healed me. <laughs> yes. Oh, come on now. He done brought you out. Of the muck and the miry clay. Come on now. He sets your feet on high ground. Come on now. You know, the Lord's been so good to us, man. Yes. Woo, I don't mind praising the Lord. <laughs> In the middle of the grocery store, I don't mind praising him while I'm driving my car. I don't mind praising him at a baseball game. I don't mind praising him wherever I might be. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. 
There's no other name I know. <laughs> Glory to God. Boy, I tell you, I didn't got choked up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, we serve a great big wonderful God. It's of the goodness of the Lord that we have not been destroyed. As a mercy, His mercy is new every morning. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Yes, 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 yes. Well, I trust you've had a good time that day. I didn't got excited. I didn't turn my switch on. Glory. Woo! Oh, my goodness. I feel like I can run a while. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, I sense the anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, don't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Where you get that from? Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Go ahead and be free in the things of God. Follow the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Ooh, yes, glory to God. Yes, yes, Pastor, there might be someone that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If that's you today and you don't quite know the Lord, and you know, you go to church, but you've never accepted him, and you've heard about Jesus, but you never accepted him. You know, the Word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, it said, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Amen. So I would love to say a prayer with you, ma'am or sir, boy or girl. And I'm going to encourage everybody else to pray along with me. Say, dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly I, come Father I come to you today. Lord, I've tried to live my life my way. I'm ready to do it your way, Lord. I just heard in your word. You said, Lord, you said, if I confess with my mouth, with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart in my that heart, God raised him from the dead, from the dead. On, the day, on the third day, you said, Lord, you said, I'll, be I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, so right now, I confess with my mouth, with my mouth that, Jesus right now, that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. My Lord, Savior, and, Master. and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead from on the third day. day. I thank you, Lord. I, you, Lord. I, receive you now I receive you now into my life. Into my life. Lord, do something wonderful, Lord, do something wonderful with, my life. with my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Man, we're excited Amen. for you. Glory to Amen. God. Oh, Amen. you're now a citizen of the Amen. kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Listen, I wrote a book, praise God, and it's called Where Do I Go From Here? And I want to encourage you, you need to get this book, praise God. Yes. This book is going to help to grow you up. It's going to help to disciple you. Now that I'm born again, what do I do, Pastor? Well, first of all, I want you to know you need to go to our website mm -hmm. at New Beginnings Plural with the S, CLC.org. New Beginnings Plural, CLC.org, and go to the prayer request tab. Put your name and address and someone from the ministry will be certain to get you this book. This book is going to help to disciple you. It's going to help coach you and grow you up into the things of God. Yes. So once again, we'd like to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Yes. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for them. How about that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I trust that you had a good time today. Yes, I pushed my button. Glory to wow. God. Man, I can't Lord. wait to get back Lord. into the house of God. Yes, Woo -wee. Glory to yes. God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, this opportunity to prosper time, it's time to give. Amen. Yes. Praise Lord. God. You know, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shall you together running over, shall men give to our bosom. Bible goes on further and say, amen, that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. And I just want to encourage you guys, even during these summer months, y'all know people on vacations, etc. Don't forget about your church. Don't forget about the temple of God. Don't neglect the temple of God. 
Amen. Praise God. We want to encourage you to give, especially during the summer months. A lot of churches just stop doing a lot of different things. Because, you know, people are on vacation and we do understand that. But, hey, man, you know, we got this new building. I want to encourage you just to continue to give. Yeah. Uh, we've been uh, buying different things and renovating the building, cash and carry. Yeah. So we've somewhat depleted some of our savings. But listen here, hey, man, we're, we're not going under. We're always going to go over the top. But we need to continue to give, hey, amen, as the Lord leads you. Hey, amen. Praise God. Yeah. Give a little something magistrate. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So we can go ahead and pay this building off. We have believed it in. Now let's believe God. And I'll be telling you more about that. Now you can continue to give, but we're going to be going into a, a capital campaign where we're going to start believing God to pay this note off, be done with it, because we got other things to do. Amen. Praise God. But don't forget, give a little extra toward, amen, just as we renovate this facility in the name of Jesus. You know, we just got... Our pew chairs just came in. You know, we had ordered other chairs, but we had been ordered our pew chairs in January of this year. And they just got here, you know, because of the pandemic. Uh, you didn't have enough truck drivers. You didn't have enough workers to make the chairs, all of that. I mean, they really just got here a couple of weeks ago. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So, you know, that was a considerable amount. Amen. $10,000 just for the chair, the pew chairs. So, you know, we just need to continue to give. Just thought I'd let you know. Amen. Praise God. We're doing great, doing fine. But we need to continue to give over the top to the house of God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Now, we encourage you to give three different ways. Number one, PayPal. You can go to newbeginningspluralclc.org. Again, you can give by way of PayPal at newbeginningspluralclc.org. Or you can go to Cash App. And that's a new beginnings plural with an S C L C. Or you can just simply just mail it in at P.O. Box 320-658. P.O. Box 320-658. Flow with Mississippi 39232. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do count the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us. Good measure, pressed down, sitting together and running over, so men give to our bosom. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that new beginnings, Father, we see money coming in from the north, south, east, and west. And Father, we say that we'll have more than enough to pay this building off so we can move on and do bigger and better things. We say this debt will be canceled supernaturally. Yes, Father, we just thank you that money coming from places that we didn't even know about, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for our members, Father. They're tithers, Father. And they uh, they can get in on the benefit of a tither that the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they ain't got room enough to receive it. And Father, we just thank you right now, Father, that he'll also rebuke the devourer. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Ministering spirits, go forth now. Cause our return to come unto us, for we believe and we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime. Wealth and riches will be in our house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We've got a prayer request here. Uh, we need to pray for Mama Jeannie Ross. Her great-grandchildren were shot in a drive-by in Jackson. Oh, my goodness. Well, again, Mama Jeannie Ross, not her, but her great-grandchildren, yeah. they got shot in a drive-by in Jackson. And the both of them are recovering. So we're going to pray for their yeah. recovery. So yeah. they were uh, accidentally shot through a drive-by and Mama Ross, we need to just continue to pray for her and her family yeah. as they go through this time. I mean, that's devastating. Yes, it is. You know, and, and some some somebody drive by and might have been shooting after somebody, who knows? And these kids get shot. Ain't that so? But they are in recovery. Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for Mama Ross and her family, Father. Father, we just thank you for our great grandchildren. We thank you for a speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now, Father. Father, we just say that they shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Yes, Lord. And Father, we just thank you right now 
Father, uh, that you'll skillfully use those doctors' hands to do what they got to do. And Father, we thank you that the kids will come out with flying colors. Yes. We speak to them bodies now. We command them to get in line. Yes. We thank you for a supernatural recovery in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for Mama Ross and, and, and Father, her family, that the peace of God will well up on the inside of them and that you're the God of all comfort. Father, and that they won't worry about this thing because everything is going to be all right. Yes, Lord. What the devil meant for bad, God, you're going to turn this thing around for the good. Yes, we thank you as a result of this that they'll be even more on fire for the things of God. And Father, we just thank you right now. We pray supernatural recovery over them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's it for today. Amen, praise God, and we want to encourage you guys, don't forget, amen, praise God, uh, for the next service, uh, the next in-person service will be Sunday, August the 7th, in the name of Jesus, and don't forget, coming in September, we're going to be going back to church every Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m., amen, praise God, don't forget about the Ministry of Health, the Volunteers Workshop, Saturday, August the 13th, I expect to see you guys there all my Ministry of Health workers and our new workers. All you need to be there, Saturday, August the 13th. Amen. Well, don't forget we need to continue to pursue God and stay hungry for the things of God because we should all be thirsty and hungry after righteousness. And the Lord said that he would fill us up. As long as we stay hungry and thirsty, he'll continue to fill us up. Amen. Amen. God bless you. On behalf of my wife and I, we love you. And Jesus is Lord.